Hello guys and welcome to a new Warner video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 1 vs 1 on Giza and I'm going to be using the 11th Parachutist. I'm up against Uncle Sam also known as Ajur who is going to be playing with the 79th Guards Tank Division. This is game one of a best of five in the semi-finals of the Warner League Season 0 Division 2. I've won the quarterfinals previously up against Mr. President. It went pretty well. We got a 2-0 victory, which was really, really nice in the best of three. So coming into this game, I hadn't lost a single game in the Warno League yet. So that was pretty awesome. And I was really, really confident going into this. It's a best of five, so there's a lot less pressure. You have plenty of time to recover if you lose a game or two. So Moving into this first game, I'm going to quickly talk about the picks and bans because you're probably wondering how I ended up on the on the 11th parachute T up against the 79th. And basically, I banned the 82nd, he banned KDA, which is a division that it seems like he doesn't like at all to play against, and then he picked the 79th first. Now, in this situation, on Giza, he has quite a big advantage with like the open range with the 79th. It's probably the strongest open range division. Now, there's two ways I can deal with this. I can try and pick a division that might be able to sort of counter its range by having other strong stuff itself, like the third or the eighth. Uh, or I could pick something that is completely off book. And that's basically where the 11E comes along. Because the 11E has its forward deployment, which it can take advantage of up against the 79th due to the 79th not having any like super forward deployment. It only has its recon forward deployment, which is still kind of slim on the ground. And also the 11E automatically shuts down any sort of SU-25 play that Uncle Sam's going to want to try and go for uh, with that division because they are known at the moment quite heavily for using the SU-25s. Although, personally, I like using them for the T-80s. But anyway, point being, I can shut down the early game with my forward deployment, and I can also take his SU-25s out of the sky. Now, dealing with the big tanks is still going to be a bit of a problem, but as long as I take air dominance and keep on top of his AA, then I can continue to use my aircraft to harass his tanks and so that won't be so much of a problem if i don't overwhelm his aa and allow his himself to build up an air like anti-air network with the tanks and such then my infantry is going to be in trouble because that's mainly what i'm going to be relying on as well as maybe like a couple of these like AM aml 90s and you'll also see the erc 90 sages later on so yeah let's have a quick look at my deployment on the left hand side, I've got the Milan 2, just going to be taking up position in this building just to cover that left road. I've got some Chasse Para, Legionnaire Para, and the Para SAS, which are going to be moving up to this building on the back side of Charlie. I've got a Gazelle Cannon that's scouting ahead, Chasse Para covering the right side of Charlie. A bunch of units coming down here that are also going to be going to the right side of Charlie. And I've got one Chasse Para that's going to be covering the road with AML 90s that are going to be trying to sort of move around the flank. I've got one that's going to be staying relatively close, one that's actually going to be trying to sneak all the way around. Brought up the Mirage early on because our cannon's also going to be joining the AML 90 on that right hand side. I've also brought in a couple of VLRAs at the start, a couple of mortar carriers in case I need smoke to advance my infantry. And that was the other thing that I was planning to do in order to deal with the enemy tanks is just smoke my legionnaire palas up and hopefully take them out with the apalas which is a really strong launcher that the uh, legionnaire pala have so here you can see i actually cancelled my orders here and, and drove my infantry all the way up into this position because my gazelle Callan managed to stop the resvedka uh, so that resvedka is not going to be uh, like unloading my vlras and so yeah, I was quite happy to go for that engagement. His BTR ATA here is trying to get away from my launchers. He is going to have to unload that though as the Gazelle Cannon was firing at it. And the Mudstroke out in the open don't really stand a chance. Gazelle Cannon doing a fantastic job. So Mirage going to be going for a little bit of a strafe here. Cheeky strafe takes out the Sapodi in one run. 
As soon as I realized that I could do that, you can see that I bring in a couple more. And I'm going to be going for the Strafe on the Resvitka and the Modestrak here. Just to prevent them from pushing in. Unfortunately, the Eagle is going to be taking out my Gazelle there. I'm going to get a couple of Strafe and Runs in. I'm not sure if they were effective at this point because basically I had lost line of sight ever since the Gazelle got shot down. But on the right hand side over here, MI-24 is going to be coming in to stop the Gazelle cannon in its tracks and it does get shot down. So Pala SAS currently engaging the Pulamachiki and there's also going to be an Eagle squad there. Now the Pala SAS do have pretty decent weapons for the ranged engagement. The VLRA also able to take out the KPV for me, which was really nice, the UAZ KPV. And with the BMP2 coming up, I need the Legionnaire Pala and the Shasa Pala. The Legionnaire Pala and the Shasa Pala, the reason I've got both of these and not just one of each is because the Shasa Pala get six launches or six ammo for their launcher, whereas the Apalas only gets four. So the Legionnaire Pala often run out very quickly. The Shasta Pala also maintained the 850 meter range and the 50% accuracy. So they're really good at taking out like enemy APCs and stuff. But the MI-24 here is going to be trying to harass my infantry. I'm going to of course bring in a Mirage straight away and deal with that. MiG-31 is going to come in and try and shoot that down. Now unfortunately I did lose my Legionnaire Pala on the left hand side and I am going to have that Mirage shot out the sky. but. Removing that helicopter from play on the left side is super important. Now I've also just noticed the T-80 here. So my Jaguar cluster going to try and come in. Unfortunately I cancelled the... Well, I changed the order. So the Jaguar turned away before it actually made its uh, attempt. I'm just going to allow that to come back round as I noticed they're not too much AA. And the MiG-31 going to be coming in though. And that is not good news for my Jaguar. So I'm going to have that leave. Unfortunately, the Iglet's going to finish it off. And I'm going to hope that I'm shooting down this MiG-31. If I can kill that, it's a big kill for me. And I managed to take it out. So Mirage 2000 managing to help me take control of the sky. And the T-80U is going to be still alive. And losing that Jaguar cluster early on is pretty bad. So I was a bit worried about my position. Chasseur Pala going to have to back off from the TO-55 engagement. That does have napalm. Makes it very difficult for the chasseurs to get their launcher off. But yeah, basically at the moment, my forward deployment has got me into the position on the left side, which is good. If I can continue to develop this position, then it's always going to be a huge threat to Charlie. And I'm going to probably be able to get a command into this sort of area and just contest, contest this for the rest of the game. This is kind of the good side of Giza. I didn't really talk about this at the start, but basically... I did roll the good side of Giza, and since each match in a best of five is played on a different map, uh, me being making sure that I win on the good side of Giza is actually pretty important. But yeah, the forward deployment also helped me get into a really good position here, and I saw another helicopter on the left, so I'm going to be going for that with the Mirage 2000. Uh, Uncle Sam, he is going to be making sure to land that. And it's quite funny because <laughs> the landed Mi-24 does fire its eagle at my aircraft as it runs away. I'm trying to get the Legionnaire Pala on target here to take that out. If I can just remove that eagle from play, I can come in for more strafing runs and so on onto the Sapley. And you can see I've got the Mirage coming in for the strafing run here. I'm going to take out the eagle. Instead, I'm going to go for the MG there. Take that out. Mirage flying over quite a lot of AA, a couple pieces there. Unfortunately, not going to get away with it as the Mirage 31 comes in and takes it out. Now the Mirage F1C coming in to try and catch out the MiG-31, but not really much chance. Only has one long-range missile, so don't get the chance to take that out. T-80U with the BTR-60 going to be engaging the Chateau Pada here. I'm going to be backing them up. I brought in the Puma Kangaroo. The main reason I brought this in was to give the Milan 2 here more ammo and fix it up. But it also turned out to be pretty handy for uh, helping out with these infantry. Now I'm just trying to get this infantry back to the Puma. But unfortunately, <laughs> the big bombs of the SU-25 are going to get the job done there. I'm still in a good position here. MI-24V is not being overly aggressive, so... 
I'm quite happy. I do have mirages ready if I need them. I've just got to be a little bit careful. Got a couple of ERC-90 Sages coming up. They're going to be trying to help deal with some of the lighter vehicles like the BTR-60. Chassis Pada, I managed to get them out of the building as I saw the SU-25 coming in and uh, managed to get away with that. So loads of Mirages coming in. Going to be going for the, MiG, the Mi-24, managed to take that out. Mirage F1C going deep for the SU-25, managed just to take that out. Very, very good. And the next thing I need on the left side is some supply to get the Legionnaire Pada and the Chasseur Pada back online because at the moment they're getting pretty low on health and I need to maintain this position. I've already got a couple of Legionnaire Pada on the way to back this up. And I've also managed in the meantime to get a P4PC into this sector, which is going to force him to bring in a command if he wants, or at least try and push heavily towards this position. But it's going to be very hard if I have AT launches on the left side and uh, the Milan 2 kind of covering the open here, which I'm going to be getting reloaded now. Shasha Pala also going to be getting back up to full strength, which is really good. AML 90 still creeping up on the right hand side to see how much is here and get a little bit of positioning over there because the other thing that uncle sam can do in this position is he could potentially just try and ram down this road all the way into foxtrot he could completely ignore this area if he wanted to uh, but so far so good i've traded pretty well with my infantry and we're still holding this position i've taken out both of his mi24s uh, the mi24 v's i know that you can only get two of them so taking out both is really really good because it takes away the sort of reactive helicopter support that his his division would otherwise have to deal with my infantry. So uh, taking out another Sapere there, maintaining a plus four advantage in the game. You might have noticed that I haven't used these mortars at all yet. The main reason I brought these in was to basically deal with any open range engagements. If I was like pushing across, I probably should have smoked here, for example. Like when I was pushing the infantry through this tree line, smoking them there would have been a really, really good idea. Uh, but I kind of just forgot about them, to be honest. <laughs> Going to be bringing in some M2A1105s. Uh, These have basically, well, they're basically just like long-range howitzers. Um, kind of medium-sized howitzers. And the plan was to basically spot and kill any AA uh, that I've been having to deal with so far and kill it. And if he brings in a command here... I can also more or less guarantee it's going to be on the right hand side because I control this left side. Uh, I've also brought up a Super Puma with some Aeromobiles, so they're going to be jumping out and reinforcing me on that side. Milan 2 gets back into position, takes out the BMP 2 in the meantime. And you can see as he's brought in the command here, it's definitely on the right hand side. The ERC 90 Sage is moving into position, hoping that if he brings any T-80s or anything across the open, I can maybe go for cheeky side shots. In the meantime, though, just going to be engaging the enemy infantry there. On this far left side, I've got a Milan 2 coming up. And that's going to be putting in, put in, put into position to engage the T-62s. Yeah, I'm in a pretty nice spot. I've got two full-strength Legionnaire Pallet, Heromobiles, Chasseur Pallet, and the Pallet SAS ready to take out this stuff. T-62 goes down nice and easy. He's going to be popping smoke on his units. BTR-60, though, going to get hit by the first of the Apalas. Milan's going to take out the second BTR, and this Legionnaire takes out the third. Now the T-62 is going to be pushing forwards, but it's already popped its smoke. Not going to be able to avoid the Milan 2. And I've also got the VLRAs on the way. So I've taken care of all of the vehicles that were supporting this push already. Now I've just got to make sure that I get rid of the infantry. And it's mostly Sapoli, so I've got to be a bit careful that it doesn't get too close. The Paddock SAS can kind of trade, but my artillery coming in here, very well timed. It's just a Paddock out in the open, and he's got them on attack move orders, so they stop briefly. He realizes he's going to be trying to push into the heavy cover as much as possible, but I'm going to be routing this Sapoli RPO. Really, really important to route that because it's going to be making my units run all over the place otherwise. The LRAs are busy fixing up the Shasta Pada and Legionnaire Pada on the backside here, so I'm going to have a huge numbers advantage shortly. We've also got the Gazelle Cannon on the left-hand side. Uh, meanwhile, Stella 10M on the right, going to be going for some artillery onto that. Uh, the Milan 2 looking for shots onto the T-80U still as well. But with these Legionnaire Pallets getting low, falling them back into 
cover to get them fixed up again. And my three full health squads moving forwards to engage us happily. Nothing they can do, just completely overwhelmed in that situation. And all three of the infantry units that he brought in to contest this area have been taken out. The Elmobiles land a lovely shot onto the T-62 as well. So that is also damaged. You see the artillery still harassing the back line here. I'm just constantly going for the shots onto his potential command position. And I'm pretty much going to be firing these constantly for the rest of the game. In theory, Uncle Sam could have gone for the counter battery. He did bring in an Akataya of his own. But, um, yeah, it wasn't too much of an issue for me because he didn't go for that in the end. Mirage coming in for the strafing run onto the Zapoli. Not as successful as the first time I <laughs> killed a squad in one run. But the Mirage 2000 going to be getting on the back of the MiG-31. And that is a kill that is definitely worth it. Also got the Mirage F1 coming in with the bombing strike. I believe I took out the T-80 with that. Got blown up. And artillery again going to try and hit the Tunguska. I did lose one of my infantry on the left there to the SU-25 bombing strike that you saw. But I'm still in a really, really strong position here. And with the T-80U taken out, it basically enables my ERC-90 Sergeys to engage the T-055s out in the open in any of this infantry. I've also got the AML-90 moving into position on the right-hand side here to help deal with the T-055. Mirage 2000 still floating about. Should have had that retreating. Uh, because it's run out of missiles, <laughs> but I obviously didn't notice that it hadn't left the field just yet. So Tunguska forced out of position, Estrella's forced out of position, Estrella on the left side here, going to be revealing itself, my Gazelle Cannon kind of just YOLOing to see if I could find the command in Alpha. I'm still building up more and more forces here, this time adding a couple of Pada SAS. Pada SAS do have the HE, so if he tries to push in with a bunch of Sapere and use the close range engagement, my Pada SAS should be able to trade relatively well. Although my Pada SAS are quite expensive, but they are very, very good close range infantry. Uh, my Kangaroo. Not entirely sure why that was moving up. I probably noticed, <laughs> and then I'm bringing it back as you can see. I want to get these Chasseur Pada fixed up. And I need the Milan 2 to get more missiles again. Uh, Chasseur Pada over here, trying to finish off the T-62 that was already hit before by the Apalas. Managed to find that kill. So that's another one going down. And yeah, we're in a pretty comfy position right now. I've taken out a lot of like his heavy duty equipment without really losing too much. Like I've been trading fighters for his helicopters. Uh, maybe trading like a Mirage for a MiG-31 and that's pretty big. You can see finally my artillery is going to find his command and take that out and the ERC-90 is going to go down to the TO-55. But I'm starting to develop my position on the left side more, getting deeper into these trees, making it more and more difficult for him to have a comeback and also making it more and more difficult for him to maintain a command in this sector. So things are going really really well anytime i spot an aa i'm going to be arting it you see the cubs moving forwards here into position going to be dropping artillery straight on top of that and yeah just more and more stuff coming in on the left side using this long tree line as cover getting the legionnaire pallet in more erc 90s coming in just looking for a way to put pressure onto alpha basically Whilst my artillery continues to pin down his artillery and, and open up the air for any time I need the mirages. Meanwhile, Puma Pirate moving up on this right side, looking to get its Gatling cannon on target. I'm going to be trying to shoot down that MI2. AML, meanwhile. Going to be engaging the TO-55, get a nice couple of shots in there, which is really good. SU-25 did come in and take out the Puma Pirate, so that's now coming over for a bombing strike onto my infantry. He's starting to develop a little bit of a push on the right side of Charlie, but with the plus four and with almost 1,600 points under my belt, it 
it's uh, pretty good for me right now. The Strally here is dealt with, so the Mirage just comes through, swiftly takes out the SU-25, Mirage 2000 takes out the MI-2. So a lovely couple of kills, just trying to make sure I avoid the Tunguska and the Kerb. The Tunguska and the Kerb need to be sort of stationary to fire effectively. So going to be able to get away from those. The artillery before was kind of forcing them to keep moving. But yeah, Milan 2 is trying to get back into position here so I can get some more missiles on target. I'm going to be swinging across with some of the Legionnaire Pala and also the Chasseur Pala so that we can kind of cut off any extra reinforcements whilst I pick off what is remaining in this push. So I've only really got like one Chasseur Pala in the way of all of this stuff and it's a bunch of Polymer Cheeky BMP2s and so on. I've got the LGB Mirage coming in looking for the bombing strike there actually targeted the Tunguska so I am going to be taking that out <laughs> the Mirage F1 really doing a good job there and the Chasseur Pada also did a fantastic job just breaking down a lot of the vehicles that were a part of that push meanwhile these Legion of Pada going to be finding and damaging a new Motostrauki unit that tried to come in and capture Charlie so I'm able to stop him bringing this back down to a plus two and all the while going to be continuing to count up my own advantage he's happily on the run up against my three veterancy infantry and this is one thing that just makes him super strong I've got some anti-char on the way as well now these Legionnaire Pala I'm forced to unload early as the T-62s come in, but these Legionnaire Pala, they've got into a position where they might be able to get their launcher on target. So I'm going to be trying to jump to this next building, and if I can get in there, and I specifically target the T-62s, they'll move to the side of the building, which they can engage from. They've got four missiles, they miss two, they hit the third, hit the fourth, and then I've got a Jaguar coming in with the cluster to take out the other and that's going to free up the Legionnaires to continue to push across the open. But it's not going to be necessary as we are approaching the 2000 points and that is going to be all she wrote for Uncle Sam in this game number one in a best of five. Very very good game for me in this best of five at the start. I was really really happy with how this went. It pretty much went exactly as I planned it to which is the the main thing, you know, I wanted to shut down the SU-25s. You can see I shot down multiple SU-25s throughout that game. Uh, I used the aircraft to keep taking out any of his helicopters that he brought in. I didn't really use my aircraft so much to take out his AA, like I was also kind of planning to do because I kept losing line of sight. And that's where the artillery came in handy. So I had just enough artillery to be able to harass his uh, AA and stop them from being as effective whilst my aircraft engaged his aircraft took down both his MiG 31s like all of these things that were like important on the list of things that I needed to do throughout this game just went perfectly so yeah really really nice and on that left side positioning from the start was fantastic like taking out the Resvertica with the Gazelle cannon was like so clutch because it really opened up the far left side of, of Charlie for me and got my Legionnaire Palas into the really nice position there but the Sasha Pala are the ones that are really like MVP in this game. You can see that their launcher is more than enough to take care of like T-62s, T-55s, BMP-2s. Like it has enough penetration and range to really help deal with a lot of those units very quickly. Um, and it has ammo as well. So really, really good choice of unit. And the Mirage F1 LGB, really, really cool bomber. Especially now that the bombs are actually guided. You can see that they like swung round when they hit the Tunguska. This is the one that killed the TATU. It was a different one that killed the Tunguska. But yeah, Legionnaire Pala getting plenty of long range snipes with their launches. Um, Mirage 2000 taking out the MiG 31. Just like really just keeping on top of his aircraft. Anything that's in the air, I need to kill with this division as quickly as possible. Uh, I think the way that he could have played this is maybe just like not invest into any helicopters, into any aircraft, and just focus purely on like spamming like Cubs and Osas and Tunguskas and whatever else. 
but it didn't look like he had any osas and i'm actually a massive fan of osas i think they are very good but he was relying very much on the strellas uh tunguskas and cubs so yeah i don't think that's as good a choice anyway first game goes to me 11th parachutist coming out of the uh gate swinging it was a uh, very very <laughs> convincing game one and in the best of five that is definitely something that you want to be having at the start like a convincing victory is going to make you very confident moving into the following games but that is it for now we'll be moving on to game two in the upcoming days uh make sure to look out for that It'll probably come out the day after this video um but that's it yeah hopefully you guys have enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video Goodbye.